Just in the last three years, China has been wined and dined, Cheers. praised and envied for its ability to do whatever it wants. Right now, China, the government, can disconnect parts of its internet in the case of war. We need to have that here, too. The Chinese pay zero capital gains tax. Folks in Congress are also going to get a chance to decide later uh, in the month whether our construction workers should sit around doing nothing while China builds the best railroads, the best schools, the best airports in the world. But it turns out those chocolate-covered compliments seem to come just as frequently as those cold-hearted criticisms from human rights to currency devaluation to trade. We finally need to confront the issue of trade with China. All too often, China's been competing in a way that's tilting the playing field and is unfair to U.S. workers. And it's not just the president himself. Those hoping to take his job also tend to flip-flop on China. These guys are after us and, and, uh, and, and, and looking for ways to, uh, uh, to, uh, to harm us. China doesn't want to bury us. They want to see us succeed and thrive so we can buy more Chinese products. Ivan Eland, senior fellow at the Independent Institute, says the paradox transcends the rhetoric. We borrow a lot of money from China, too, so it's quite a curious thing that we're really borrowing money to pay for defending other countries from China, right? I mean, that's what we're really doing. The mixed messages are reaching the masses as well. In a recent Gallup poll, by 52 percent to 32 percent, Americans were more likely to name China than the United States as the leading economic power in the world today, even though it's not. However, in a separate survey, when asked which country represents the greatest danger, China came in second, only after Iran. In life and love, there appears to be a fine line between resentment and respect. I want to beat China. I want to go to war with China and, and make America the most attractive place in the world to do business. If you look at China, they're in a very different situation. They save for their own retirement security. They don't have AFDC. They don't have the modern welfare state. And China's growing. It's that growth and the sharing is caring relationship that has bound these countries in this holy union. This trade uh, and economic interdependence with China is, is really a defining uh, factor. Perhaps like most relationships, there's nothing simple about the one between the U.S. and China. There are disagreements about who gets to lead when, how to spend the money, and how to raise the children. But the fact is this relationship is one that's going to be around for generations to come. In Washington, Christine Frizzau, RT.